So welcome everybody to this first finals day in the 2022 Strandia Memorial Tournament. As our MC said just there, there is prize money on offer. This is the first event in the new Golden Belt series. And this is the final at flyweight, men's flyweight, 51 kilos. This is Damir Abdekadir of Kazakhstan. who have got a good win in the semi-final against yeah. Follow Munatsa Canyon of Russia, 4-0. It's Kazakhstan against Uzbekistan in this opening final, and this is Hassan Boy Dusmatov. The field in the strand here is very, very strong. It generally is, but this year there are Olympic, world, continental medalists absolutely everywhere. Dusmatov got a gold in Rio in 2016, a silver at the World Championships in 2017. He was then out of Ivor boxing, he turned professional until he returned in El Belgrade. Last October, November, no seeding in that competition. He got Sakan Bibasinov of Kazakhstan in the prelims. Unbelievable draw and was eliminated. But here he is. He beat Timur Kabdashov, who was also competing for Kazakhstan in the semi finals. So that's Dusmatov in the blue, won the Valbarka Trophy in Rio in 2016 as well. And Abdekadir, Damit Abdekadir in the red, Kazakhstan in the red, Uzbekistan in the blue, two southpaws here. Three, three minute rounds as always. Dismartov just reaching with a left hand to the body there, then countered with a, a right hook. Abdekadir, the longer leader fighter of these two with a superior kind of reach. So interesting seeing Dismartov in that world championships really was short right hand there nice jab from Abdikadir Smartov just slipping onto the right hand there from Abdikadir doing a good job of getting up close where he needs to be takes that jab on the gloves there does Smartov needs to try and get that that lead hand working if he can Abdikadir then just Lists to his right hand side and throws that right hand. Strandje, the oldest European international tournament, been going since 1950. We had the 66th edition of the Botch Guy a couple of weeks ago. Brazil dominated there, nine gold medals in total. Looking for the one two there, just Martov. Just pulled off the left hand a little bit, didn't quite manage to land it almost midway through this opening round. Nice combination to the body there from Dusmartov. Winging lead, right hand from Ljusbek as well. Just took a jab there as he looked to try and counter to the body. Had the card here. Hasn't quite got his range yet. When he's at that mid-range there, then he's got a problem because Dusmartov could land from there he can't quite keep it on the outside here Abdekadir it's not that he isn't having some success because he is nice right to the body there from Abdekadir but he doesn't necessarily use that height and reach advantage fighters with longer levers do quite often like it at mid-range they can dig those toes in look for the body neat jab to the body there from Dusmatov and just short with the Left hand there, Abdekadir. <laughs> Trying to counter with that right hand again there. Does Martov, he was short that time. But lands a couple of neat looking right hands there, right towards the end of the round here. It's been a good opening round for the Uzbek. And there's that right hand again. He does hold those gloves a little bit low, Abdekadir. Leaves that head open. And a smile on the face there of Desmart, obviously, goes back to his corner.
He's looking to fire off with that right hook. As often as he can, does Martov. Abdekade, good example there of, of, of those low hands. He can tend to be a little bit sloppy with his punches at times in that they don't go out that quick, they don't come back that quick. And against somebody like Dismartov, that's a problem because everything he does is, is sharp. We didn't get a look at the scores there, but that would have been a round for the fighter in blue. Nice combination to the body there from Abdekadir. Dismartov looking for that left hand over the top. Referee just giving them time to work it out themselves there, which is good to see. Right hand from Dismartov. Abdekar, they're looking to try and set his feet and, and trade when they're at that kind of distance. And as I say, he does have some capacity for that, but that is more Dismartov's kind of area, more his kind of fight. Abdekar there playing into his hands, really, exchanging from there. That was better from the Kazakh. He just gave himself a, a little bit more room and found the range. He does tend to lean in a little bit as he throws, weights quite heavily on that front foot, the chin is on show, just, uh, just a touch, these are the kinds of things that get exploited by an opponent like the one he's got here, short right hand there from Dismartov again, some nice head movement off the back of it, there's that right hand, there it is, he's looking to trigger it, whenever he sees something come from Abdekard here, which is maybe just a little bit slow because those hands go back low, they stay low. Then he looks to fire that right hand. As I say, it was Vasinov who was in action for Kazakhstan at the World Championships. He had an excellent tournament, really did. bronzes at the Asian Championships and the Olympic Games before he picked up gold in Belgrade. Very interesting elite men's world championships in Belgrade. Lots of new faces, as is generally the case after the end of an Olympic cycle. A very unusual year for obvious reasons, having an Olympics and a world championships in the, in the same year. Never happened before. Slightly untidy. Final 10 seconds of round two. And there goes the belt. Had some good success there and then took the feet back out. Caused Desmartov just to tuck up. Wasn't much else he could do there. But Ducardi getting to work. There's that right hand. Lead right hook, he just whips up from low. Already had the inaugural Asian under 22s in Uzbekistan at the end of January. The Asian youths and juniors coming up towards the end of this month, going into March as well. Lots of tournaments on the way. Very, very busy year in the IVA calendar, as it was last year as well. We did extremely well to put on so many events in the in the grip of the pandemic, and we still were throughout the, the course of the year. That was demonstrated by the fact that the Women's World Championships, which was due for last December, due to Omicron, had to be rescheduled for May. That'll be in Istanbul. Into the third round here. The smart up again, just looking to plant his feet and, and let rip with that lead right hand. 
It's been a good fight, this. Good fight to watch. Abdicard here is, as I say, he's had his pockets of success, certainly. He had a slightly better second round than he did first, but I still would have gone to the blue corner with it. Just moving off to his right as he fires that right hand there, just Martov. as he got close and Abdicardi was looking to try and wrap him up but the, the smaller man there, the man in blue, just had enough room to work in. Right hand on the inside again there, Dusmato finding the body. He's just a little bit too close there, Abdicardi. Interestingly, in this third round, he seems to be making an effort to get right on top of Dusmartov, but he doesn't really have room to get his longer arms free and, and get too much done. He's trying to bring the heat here, which is absolutely the right thing to do. But he's just got to give himself a, a touch more space. Forty-five seconds remaining in this. Opening final here in Sofia. Long left hand there from Abdekar. It didn't miss by much, but then standing a little bit tall and square, caught a left hand from Dusmartov and then just gives him one on the back of the head. Final few seconds here for this men's flyweight final. After this, we've got the men's featherweight and light welterweights, and then into the women's light flyweight, bantamweight, and lightweight. Ireland's Olympic champion Kelly Harrington in action in the final fight of this session. So there goes the belt as Martov celebrates the victory. I would make that three rounds to nil in favour of him, but a good fight, a good fight. Abdekar here, not nearly as experienced, but plenty into that. And as I say, he did have some success. He wasn't all one-way traffic. But I don't think he'll have done enough to, to win a round there. So how so boy does Martov gets it? by unanimous decision with our five scoring judges at ringside. Bows to all four corners of the ring and then makes his way out. And now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, on the 